Okay, so can you tell us what your name is and how old you are? Donovan Murphy. I'm 51 years old. Okay, and how long have you been staying here? Um, in nine Sipoin? years. In in Tipoin. In Tipoin, nine years. And how long have you been on the streets in general? Well, in general, nine years. Also nine years. Nine and years. what happened nine years ago? Uh, got involved with a traditional healer. I wasn't happy in council because I was being underpaid a lot. So I got six months back pay when I got appointed in 2014, which should have happened in 2010 after I did the course. But we were really forced into law enforcement after our security jobs were made redundant. Either get a redundancy package or would you like a transfer? Okay. I would have taken redundancy. Unfortunately, it never happened due, like I said, finances. Oh, we'll give you 21 million. Lost 750,000, lost my house. Wound up on the road. Wait, so you're saying you were a security guard? Uh, or you were in you were in actual law enforcement? Actual law enforcement officer. Like a police officer or what? For the city of Cape Town. You were a police officer for the city of... Uh, okay, and then they were, they were cutting jobs. Is that what you were saying? Uh, they made our job redundant. We were for security. Okay. They made that job redundant. Okay. So we'll find a cheaper hiring outside security than our guys. Uh, which is true because if one of us gets sick, it's hard to replace that person. Yes. So, but at the end of the day, the proper process is management has a union official. Our union official at the time was Bernardo. I'm here for management and you, conflict of interest. Hmm. Any person whose interest is interesting is self. His own interest, okay. So, is a redundancy package or take a job. Hmm. Now you've got HR involved and a union official for you guys, which is us workers. That never happened. Yes. So, 2006, I'm operating in law enforcement under the guise of a law enforcement officer, which I wasn't. Mm. Go on the course in 2010, pass that, right. supposed to get my appointment card. Due to the then ED Richard Bosman not liking us. Simple fact is, I told Richard Bosman in 2000 when he messed up over on our salary, your master pushed. <laughs> Very direct, straightforward ED worker. Sorry, he was yeah. our then director. <laughs> Didn't That's like me then. Good. Got a service commendation in 2012 for me getting a guy out of Langa Arts and Culture Center, which broke in. I arrested him with a member of SAP because my colleague is too fat. Okay. Right, get over the fence, get the rest, get the medal, get almost like, here's your medal, get out my office, that type of thing. Okay. So 2014, members of what they call the auxiliary, that's members of Ranyasa Gardens area wanting to play law enforcement officers, they go on the course, they get appointment, they ride around with full members. So we were complaining to these people, 2014, why are these people not appointed? At the time, JP Smith was in this meeting, which posed questions and answers had to be given, appointed, six months back pay, doing the job from 2006. So when somebody says, Hey, make a sacrifice of your pension and you'll get 21 million. Sounds too good. Yeah. For what I am. That's why I'm here today. Okay, so they, they made, they gave you a promise and they said if you let go of your yeah, pension. Yeah, the traditional units. If I give my pension over, I'll get 21 million, oh, which never happened. So, so traditional units. So I got conned my money. Oh, so, oh, you, got ca you got conned. Yeah. Uh, okay. and Super poor as I am. Yes. So then you lost, what did you lose when you... 750,000 and my house. And then 2016, I was in Napier Shelter till 2018, and yeah. it was a nice experience because they renovated the place and it became prison showers. There's no cubicle. How are you sorting out my human dignity? I did not want to see the man next to me, what he's got. <laughs> no, no, thank you. No. Then in 2016, like I mentioned, phones for supper with a bit of stew. Yeah. No. And how do you think it was that you ended up being tricked by that uh, that guy, that traditional healer? Look, you're not making the debts. You're so much in shit. It's just not funny. You're working, but you're not seeing your money. So, yeah, but of stupidity on my part, like I said. Yeah. Okay, and then you couldn't go back to work again or not? No. That work? I wouldn't go back to it. Not what I've seen on the roads. 
What have you seen on the road? Well, abuse of the people. Yeah. I mean, these people are homeless. We are homeless. Mm. Treat us with dignity, with respect. Do you have to kick a man's feet when they are sleeping? Mm. Um, let me put it this way. In the old days, two ways. I shake your feet. My partner's covering you at the top. Because you might just come out with something. So my partner's got his pepper spray there if that happens. Or you pull the blanket off the person. Person's going to be first like, okay, uh, it's law enforcement. We've got this complaint. But I mean, a person's sleeping. If the person is doing nothing, just ignore it. No. But it's again, the general public. People with jobs, people with money. We're nothing in their eyes, that's it. Oh, so you're saying the law enforcement, they kind of abuse the people on the sleeping? They abuse the powers, their powers. I asked some African law enforcement officers now the other time, your appointment cards, please, blatantly refuse. Oh. You're supposed to wear your okay, name no. shield at all times. Yes. They don't. They're going around just a jacket law enforcement. Mm. I can get a law enforcement jacket, go around and act to law enforcement. Okay. And tell us about your upbringing. Did you grow up in Cape Town or what? <coughs> Born and bred. What, what area in Cape Town? Hobbs. You see those three steps going up to the stoop? Yes. Uncle Did you build them? No. no. I was six years old at the time. My mom's sitting on the steps and I'm getting my ass worked with a uh, wooden baking spoon. Because I used wooden baking spoon to dig in garden. Oh, wow. Ass first. Taught me that. So your mom was quite strict? Very strict upbringing, mm. but loved. You stand in the corner, turn to your right. On the corner, if you turn to your right, you got the library, correct? Uh, yeah. No, well, yes. it's on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And you it's in Station Road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, by the stop street here, you got a block of flats across the road, correct? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Go down? Yes. Stop street? Yes. Station Road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To your right, library. So you know the area, okay. Oh. Old days? Dairy Bell factory shop, right on the corner. Yes. So that was Foti's Cafe and then Faber's Butchery. Best okay. butchery in the Western Cape. Yeah. Sons messed it up. Father would thought. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I lived there till about, I was about 10 or 11. Then we um, moved okay. to Southfield. What was it like living in, in, that, in that house? Ah, uh, was awesome. It's a nice house, right? Yeah, it's a lovely house. Yeah, it's got a good energy. Nice big garden at the back. Oh, yes. Yeah. My dad used to park his work bucky in there. Oh, uh, yeah. Come home for lunch, park the bucky, and he had to take me around the block. Yes. That um, Bougainvillea in the front is so big now. It's massive. The pink one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was actually a red face brick wall in front as in my father book. Oh, really? No, it's not there. It's only a green palisade at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they broke it down. We were, mm. My dad sold the house, me and my mom were walking past, I'm having a law. The mm. guy's breaking the wall and I'm just wet. Yeah, it, was, it would have been nice to have a wall there, actually. I was thinking that the other day. Yeah. Okay. And what else do you remember from living there? Um, my uncle's our station kept in the backyard. Okay. Um, as you're coming out the back door, yeah. there used to be a little... It's like an out, outhouse. Outhouse. Yeah, yeah. Effort. It's still there, yeah. The dog used to be in there because mm. we used to have an African maid by the name of Annie. Okay. That was our domestic and my mom, so to speak. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And um, good times. Yeah. This. And why did you leave there then? Uh, dad moved to Southfield. Most of the family was staying that time. Okay. So just to be connected. Which years were you living there? <coughs> I was there, I was born in 73. Okay. So about, yeah, 79, 80. Okay. And you, did your parents own that house? Or? Yeah. Okay. And then they moved to Southfield after And then they moved to Southfield. Oh, that's so crazy that I live in the house that you used to live in. Like, how crazy is that? <laughs> did you just live there with your mom and dad or with anyone else? Uh, mom, dad, and my brother. William. Okay. Yeah. And there was only three bedrooms. Three bedrooms or did two bedrooms? Uh, I think there were three. Yeah, I think there's three as well. Okay. okay um, and okay, so then you moved to Southfield, and then in, did you go t straight to like the um, training after high school or what? No, um, we yeah. no. we moved up to Janus, then, but it's not. 
Um, but father was married the first time, wife passed away, my mom's second wife. So yeah. my so-called brother, Dennis. Dan moved up to Joburg, everything, hunky dog, never happened. Mom died there, age 15, seven, well, next year came down back to Joburg, Cape Town, sorry. Dad passed away, age 17, so yeah, mm. just been a fight, fight, fight. So your, your upbringing was a little bit, was difficult. Oh, How yeah. was it difficult? Well, losing your parents at mm. that age and then staying on your own two feet. Yeah, so your parents died when you were quite young. Yeah. How did they pass? Uh, mom with a brain hemorrhage, found her with her eyes rolled back, tongue hanging out. Oh, no. Dad died next to me of a heart attack. Oh, no. And did you ever get married, children, anything like that? Yeah, married, divorced, one son. Okay. And is your family not offer any help for you? Uh, family doesn't know I'm in the street, so I don't bother. Where, where is your family? Um, mom, dad, that's it. And your son, he doesn't know where you are? <coughs> no, he knows where I am, but I'm in embarrassment. So I'm the team, he said to me, that's it. Why, why, why does he not help you? Well, let's put it this way. Comes over when I set that clicks. Hey, Dan, I'm here with my two friends. We're going to the beach. Mm. Walks to the beach. Like five minutes, greet. Not even five minutes, greet. Walks past, I'm like talking to somebody. So I put two and two together, hey, I'm embarrassed. So I said it's right. You dead to me, I'm dead to you. Does he live in Cape Town or what? Yeah. Where does he live? His mom also in Southfield. Also in Southfield, okay. Yeah. And what is is there any benefits of living on the street? Uh no. Not one. Not one. Uh, if you get a meal you're lucky. If you get some money to buy food, you're lucky. Yeah. There are organizations they give food but yeah, the quality of food. Uh, I eat better here on the street myself. So people donate or give you food, right? Give me food and there's a few people who know me. So, yeah. So like I don't survive every day like I would like to. But yeah, if I can get a cup of coffee, I'm happy. And the, you're next to Machachas. You probably get a lot of like, food from there, right? I'm uh, imagining. No. <laughs> okay. No. Why do you think that is? Seems no, quite... no um, number one, they're not a charity. Look, don't get me wrong, um, with these shops here, that's family. So, yeah, but I did get from the first time to time. So, you know some of the residents here? Yeah, and that's all they, Are they friendly? Yeah, very friendly. How, do they help you? What what kind of things do they do? Well, I've got tops, I get given books which I enjoy. I get the whole day, I feel safer coming out of a flat with you sitting here. Oh, okay. So things like that. Okay, so you do you, do you also play kind of a security role around here? Well, I try to, but yeah, just I get to deal with a lot of idiots and <laughs> yeah, patience isn't my very <laughs> strong virtue. What kind of people do you have to deal with that you don't like? These mainly retarded drug addicts mm. and these. Pussy law numbers, I'm a man. Yeah. I've had calls to lose my temper three times in this place. Mm. One of them sold GBH, went to court, case withdrawn. Second time, explained on the road why. Long story, won't go into that. Both times got asked, what weapon did I use? I'm Irish, don't need a weapon. Right here. Uh, so you, you lost your temper and then someone got hurt or what? Yeah. Well, there was an old man, Parkinson, guy sitting over here, duck his safe, forces the old man to give him his food. I found out later the old man only had two chips, asked for it to be wrapped. Mm. Took the food out of that guy's hand and gave it back to the old man. Uh, Long story short, I shouldn't have tapped the guy, but I gave him a small little slap. Gave uh, me a slap back when he went across the road for stones. And I got told that he's behind you with stones. I went over and I nailed. Got by it, she asked me, what weapon did I use? Did you use a weapon? My fist. Almost came close to eating another one of those pussy numbers today. The, the what? Pussy numbers. Wait, what's that? Uh, I'll stab you with a knife. If you're a man, raise your fists. Mano a mano. Let your boy stand one side. 
Uh. But then again, I'm like a Charlie Bronson. The what? Charlie Bronson. Look it up, Michael Peterson. Okay. Is his real name? Went by the alias of Charlie Bronson, one of Britain's worst prisoners. This guy's been more in solitary confinement than I had hot meals in my life. Okay. So you seem to be quite, there's quite a lot of things to be angry about on living here. Yeah. Mm. And okay. like I said, I'm just waiting for somebody to really piss me off. And then what? Frustration takes over, Irish takes over, blankets come down. Look, love, That's like scary. I said, I'm Irish. And um, what lessons have you learned from living on the street? Takes balls to be here. Yeah. Takes balls to be here. If you can't handle it, get out. Yeah, it's like only the toughest people probably can survive, right? Yeah. yeah. And what do you think is the solution to the homelessness in Cape Town? Firstly, get rid of corruption. Yeah. That's the main important thing. Do you think that's possible though? I mean, think, look, even yeah, America but, is corrupt. Yeah. I mean, everywhere is corrupt, so let's look, be yeah, honest. Let's take let's Napier Shop, Mandela Day. 16th of June, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. We go into the shelter. I'm there already before the Mandela Day. Evening, ma'am. So I'm like, hey, excellent. Asian was there, a lot of stuff was delivered. We got jack shit. Got Management was carrying it off at no. the time. Boot load, back seat, front seat. That was Jerry low at the time. I had a good laugh. Got called for sexual harassment. No, Jerry follows his calling in the church. That was on the AGM pamphlet before I got kicked out. Because I don't play well. Uh, don't give me a stress relief force. I do not need stress relief. Do not give me... Uh, oh, fuck off. <laughs> okay. Seems like you've got quite a lot quite a lot on your plate, right? Extremely a lot. Okay. okay, anything else you'd like people to know about living on the street, being here? Um, think of us when it rains, because mm. we can't pitch a tent, we're not allowed to. Yeah. If you sleep under the roof, you get chased like a dog. So yeah. just take us into consideration at that time. Yeah. What would you like people to know about you specifically? Well, specifically, I don't beg. I'll greet you, mm. that's it. Yeah, you don't, yeah. I've walked past you a couple of times, I've, you haven't said anything. Yeah. Oh. Hi ma'am, can you buy me a loaf of bread? <laughs> Sorry, I've got my dignity, my self-respect. Okay. Okay, anything else you'd like people to know? Um, I'm white and I'm jobless. Maybe not for long. How, how could people help you? Like, if they, because they know where you are, you're next to the Machachos and Seapoint, opposite Seapoint Library. Well, well, right how can people help? To give us curious and yes. kids. Um, how can people help you specifically? Okay, I want to start my own t-shirt printing business. T-shirt printing. For that, I need to get stock. For that, I need money. To have what I want up here, uh, print only, and what's up here is pretty messed up. Which, let me give you an example. Picture this: big letters, but not too big. Oh. England, sir, still has a queen. God save the Queen. Picture of Charles in a kilt, hopefully in the gay pride colours. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, in commas, God save us from this Queen. <laughs> Did you think that up yourself? Yeah. That's cool. How's this? Okay. Top yeah. of the morning to you. For God's sake, please help. I'm disabled. I'm Irish. <laughs> Fucking noggin's full of it. Okay, so someone could maybe donate some. Well, maybe people can come and talk to you, and then well, you can talk about the things that you like. To put it, put on a uh, T-shirt, and well, then they some can. Some are going slogans because we are Irish, are good at slogans. Feel <laughs> the Brits, Brits out, you know, <laughs> along those lines. Yeah. But yeah, we're good at slogans, and I've got a messed up dark sense of humour. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So whoever can help you with this T-shirt printing and your all these cool ideas you have in your head to put yeah. them on T-shirts or somewhere, they can help yeah. you with that, right? Okay, fabulous. Okay, well, thank you so much for talking to us and no all problem. of the best. All of the best to you. Uh, have a good night to you guys. Thank you.